Hello and welcome to World's Finest, the Southgate Mini Group's guide to the weekly DC Comics of the Week. As always, I am Phil Perch, and joining me is... That's right, funny story, nobody showed up today. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not saying anyone left me in the lurch. Uh, Lilith, of course, we all miss Lilith. Uh, this week she is, I don't think she's en route, she might be there already, to, uh, well this goes all over the board, the, the Before the Bat feed, so, you probably know the name Kelly DeMarzio, uh, one of my co-hosts on Before the Bat, this weekend is her wedding, and, uh, Lilith was one of the bridesmaids, so, Lilith was traveling there, but, no, <laughs> Lilith is such a trooper, she was willing to do this with me last night from the airport, but whatever airport she was at, I know she had at least one layover, her plane was late, so I told her, you know what, don't worry about it, enjoy the weekend, you know, because she doesn't get to see Kelly that much. Uh, then I contacted our good friend Tyler Patrick, but unfortunately, so many things in Tyler's life, you know, he's married, he has a young child... He's been laid up. I know he hasn't been able to work. He's had some medical things, so he couldn't get his books this week. Uh, I even went way deep into the benches. I, even, I tried to recruit uh, Southgate Media Group's own Charles Skaggs, but unfortunately, he could not join me either. So, you are stuck with me this week. I, Although, at the end of this podcast, after we have some fun... We will have even greater fun when Charlie Esser joins me to review this week's Superman number four. So, without further ado, I'll get to the books. Uh, start with Aquaman number four. Um, I have to say, as a newer Aquaman fan, I know I say this every time Aquaman comes out and I'm a newer fan. Lilith, she's a big fan of Aquaman. I know she wasn't too thrilled with a lot of the new 52 run. I caught like the last three issues in the new 52 run i was worried that i was going to be bored with aquaman i don't know just the rep aquaman gets you know he's he's that guy in the water he talks to fish but uh i've been finding this story interesting the whole political intrigue and he's trying to bring atlantis onto the world stage as like a you know another country another you know another superpower um very interesting, and we get Black Manta making some deals with a, I don't know if they're terrorists or some kind of shady organization. Um, I I think they're a new group, but like I said, I'm a newer fan. Lil can tell us if they're new, but their name is Nemo. Um, they are what does that? Nautical enforcement of macrocosmic order. So basically, they're like I guess the Court of Owls of the Oceans. <laughs> but uh then you get you know Aquaman is willing to surrender himself to the uh to the American authorities so you know they didn't go to war with Atlantis but then Mira breaks him out you know because there's fiery redheads but uh all in all I've been enjoying like I said I've really been enjoying the Aquaman book uh Aquaman number four I probably give it three point seven five. Um, uh, moving on, we'll do Green Lanterns number four. Um, once again, I wasn't sure how I was going to take to this book because unlike Lilith, I am a Howard Jordan fan. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of all the lanterns, all the classic lanterns, How Jordan, Jon Stewart, Cal Rayner. Cal Rayner was the lantern when I started. I, st I basically started reading Green Lantern when Cal started being Green Lantern, so... He has a special place, and even Guy Gardner to a certain extent, although he's probably my least favorite of those four. But uh, the whole Simon Baz and Jessica thing, I was like, okay, I'm not sure, but I wasn't even sure about the you know the reluctant rookies working together. But it's working for me. And then you throw in the Red Lanterns. The Red Lanterns can be problematic if you don't get the writing right, at least in my opinion. But I think. They've been hitting it good here, and we really didn't get any update on Sinestro or the uh, Yellow Lanterns. Although I guess that's it. that's the Hal Jordan book, but I bet you before the year's out we'll, we're gonna get some kind of crossover or something of these two books. Um, we also get the mysterious uh, 
one of the guardians visiting Simon's family. What's up with that? Um, trouble on the horizon. Mm -hmm. When the boss comes to see you at home. Uh, all in all, like I said, I've been enjoying this a lot more than I thought it would be. It's, if you're a fan of Green Lantern, I would pick this up, even if you're not familiar with these two newer lanterns. Uh, Green Lantern number four, I'd say it's a very solid three and a half for me. <laughs> you hear that? That's a bag and board, people. Anytime you hear that on our podcast, that's a bag and board, because unlike our friend Lilith, I get all my books, uh, in hard copies, not digitally. Gotta support our, uh, our local merchants, people. Uh, ooh, I didn't even open this one. Oh, I did, but I put it back in. Uh, Green Lan- Oh, Green Lantern. Sorry. Justice League number two. Um, I know Lilith has had issues with the League for a while now, since New 52, but... I am... I see very a lot of potential in this story. Uh, once again, we get Simon and Jessica. We get the Flash. Uh, we get Batman. We get Aquaman, Cyborg, Wonder Woman. Uh, but they there's there's a threat coming and uh, that could destroy the entire planet, and so they're going to need Superman's help. And of course, it's. Uh, our original Superman from uh, the Lewis and Clark book and all the Superman books now, the pre-New 52 Superman. Um, and I understand Batman is supposed to be, like, the cautious one, maybe all, uh, even borderline paranoid, but that's the only problem I have with this story so far, is just Batman's like, I don't know if we can trust this new Superman, and it's just like, I'm sure Lilith would agree with me if I were here, if she were here, or even Tyler. It's just like, you know, you trusted New 52 Superman, and I, how do I put this nicely? He was a bumbling idiot most of the time, uh, but now you have this capable, older, wiser, uh, more, of a, more of a deep thinker Superman. I know you just met him not too long ago, but I would... <laughs> Come on, Batman, just give him enough rope to hang himself. He, he will come through for you. Um, yeah, just... I understand the trepidation Batman has, but if they hopefully they can just get over that quick, and I think it would, the team would be firing on all cylinders. And I know it's an already heavy roster with two Green Lanterns and the rest of the team, but I really wish they would put uh, Martian Manhunter back in here. And kind of give us the um, the original seven, you know, like from the Grant Morrison run. Except now, instead, I guess instead of one Green Lantern, we'd have two. But um, well, eventually, I mean, you could always, I mean, they have their own book. You could phase one of them out, or they could rotate. You know, one one arc it's Jessica, the next arc could be Simon. So, uh, like I said, I think that's my only problem. I see potential. I hope they just, I hope they don't drag these out a lot. Most of the Rebirth books have been a quicker pace, I would say, than the new 52 was. So, I would have to say this one's probably another mm, three and a half for me. Alright, let's get to some... Batman number four. Um, Very good. You could tell they're setting the stage for Batman and the Monster Man. I can't wait for that. That's a Steve Orlando story, and I have my request in. I'm hoping to talk to Mr. Orlando about uh, Batman and Nightwing and that whole arc, and even his his upcoming Supergirl, his time on Midnighter. So please, uh, if uh, Steve Orlando or anyone at DC, if you can hear me, please, I would... Me and Lilith would love to talk to you. Uh, but this issue, it seems Gotham and Gotham Girl have been brainwashed, uh, which seems pretty dangerous because they're both pretty strong metahumans who, I don't know if they could give Superman a run for his money, but they could give him maybe a hard couple minutes. Um... I love the, I love Tom King's writing, I, I love... Uh, Tim and Tim Seeley on Grayson. He's, I think he's doing a bang, bang up job on uh, on this Batman book. 
And of course, we get an appearance by Amanda Waller, because what comes out this week? Suicide Squad. Actually, when I'm recording this, today's Friday, this this is the day Suicide Squad comes out. I hope to see it. Well, I will see it tomorrow, so uh, send me your thoughts. And while I'm thinking of it, send us your thoughts on Suicide Squad. We're going to be doing a special, me, Lil, and uh, Charlie, so... And if you if you see our specials already up, keep sending in your thoughts on Suicide Squad. I mean, we'll me and Lilith read them here. Um, but so of course, I mean, we've seen that. I'm, gu I'm guessing with uh, the Monster Men storyline, we've already seen an, a quick appearance by Hugo Strange in the Psycho Pirate. So I'm assuming it's Hugo Strange who's brainwashed Gotham and Gotham Girls. So. That should be interesting. Besides the monsters, just Hugo. I don't know if they've ever done that before. Hugo Strange actually has... Um, well, Gotham Girl's in the Batcave, so she might be out of his hands, but he still has Gotham, the uh, the person. But So if Hugo has Gotham under his power, I don't think they've ever had a, him control like a super-powered person like that before. That should be pretty interesting. An egomaniac like Hugo with a, with a person that capable. Uh, but Batman number four is really good. I give it a, I'd say, four, four and a half. Uh, and keep the Batman streak going with Batman Beyond number 15. Um, I'm assuming next issue will probably be the final issue because it is continued. But I know uh, Batman Beyond Rebirth is coming. And spoiler alerts, if you don't want to hear, skip ahead about 10 seconds. Uh, when Rebirth uh, hits, uh, Terry McGinnis is coming back in the suit, so who knows what's going to happen in this version of Tim Drake. Uh, but basically, uh, Tim and Barbara uh, uh, run across uh, when they find uh, Spellbinder, and he has uh, Rewire with him, but they find out it's not the original Rewire, but it's Terry McGinnis. He's He's alive. Because basically, during Future's End, I guess, Tim figures out that when he, he changed the timeline enough so that Terry Terry didn't die, he he almost did, but he he has some he has some kind of device keeping his heart pumping. And I don't know if this is true or not, but Spellbinders told him the only way that he can stay alive is to take the uh, Batman suit back, so he uh, uh hip hypnotized Terry McGinnis is fighting Tim Drake but don't worry Matt McGinnis is coming to the rescue uh like I said this book has been really good um can't wait till they bring I like Tim but I can't can't wait till they bring Terry back I wonder if they're gonna kill Tim off uh no we still have we still have a uh, version in the present so so if he's still alive in the present can he really die it's one of those uh deep deep thoughts to think about uh Batman Beyond number 15, this is uh, probably a f another four and a half for me. Uh, I know what you're thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm being a lot nicer now that Lil is not here, but no, that's not true, no. Um, I think I, I don't know. I'm thinking she's enjoying Batman Beyond, but I might be enjoying it a little more than she is. Uh, well, anyway, moving on, uh, Green Arrow number four, uh, really good we once of course you know Oliver Queen has basically lost his fortune uh he basically had it stolen from him uh so he's working to get it back he comes across a new arrival in the city a return it's John Diggle they basically argue for a bit and then they team up uh and then we see Black Canary uh <clears throat> She's basically she she's basically already on the trail of the bad guys. Uh but we see uh Oliver and Diggle go to Henry Fife's apartment for help with the with uh, a laptop they stole because I'm guessing they're they're keeping to their promise. They're not bringing in Felicity Felicity Smoke, so I guess she's at least in the comics she's well Let's be real, in the comics and the TV show, she's a very polarizing figure right now. Um, but anyway, we also we get another shadowy organization, like Court of Owls. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's a successful uh, formula. So they, you know, they had created one for Aquaman, and now here we're getting uh, this group. 
Oh, what is their name? Um, the Ninth Circle. Their members basically melt their flesh off. And Oliver, like I said, Oliver and Diggle stole one of their laptops. And they basically get contact with them. They say, we have Black Canary. If you want her alive, you have to bring the laptop. But unfortunately, Fife uh, spills his drink on the laptop. So it's useless. So Oliver and Diggle go go out to meet the Ninth Circle ready to fight because they have nothing else to offer them. So, um, I like this book. It's a malaminated action. Uh, I can't get enough every month. I'm always disappointed when it's over. Um, everyone on this job, you're doing, everyone on this book, you're doing a superb job on this book. Uh, this is a five for me. Um, we always cheat. Me and Lil have been cheating lately, but I'll do two picks again this week. Uh, this will be my first pick. Uh, this is a solid five for me, and my other pick of the week, which I will also give a five to, is Nightwing number two. Um, they misled us, because remember, the uh, title of this arc is Better Than Batman, and so we thought, oh, what, Nightwing is going to be better than Batman, or try to be better than Batman? But no, it's basically, he's still working for the Parliament of Owls, what the uh, Court of Owls has... Uh, evolved into he they've they've assigned him a partner named raptor who basically i guess he seems i don't know if they're trying to paint him as a hero or a villain this raptor because he basically seems like he'll do anything to get the job done and i don't want to spoil too much on this but Raptor is basically, you know, I'm better than Batman. You, you know, you work with me, you'll be better than Batman. So that's where this, the title comes from. But Raptor kind of hints around at the end that um, maybe he he's figured out that Dick's just undercover to try to bring down the Parliament, and he's he kind of hinted that maybe that's what he's doing too. But hopefully, he's not doing this to double cross uh, Nightwing. But uh. It's a really good story. We de- we get some good a good, good scene or two with uh, Nightwing and Batgirl, and I'm hoping I'm hoping they're gonna start up that they uh Dick Grayson, Barbara Gordon romance again. Please, writers, uh, please Tim Seeley once again another gentleman I would like to talk to. I've talked to him once. Me and Lois, we would like to talk to him again, and that would probably be a big item on my agenda is to beg him to bring back the romance between Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon. Uh, like I said, my second pick of the week. It's another solid five for me. And now, uh, without further ado, we will get to Charlie Esser and his pick of the week, and we will discuss Superman number four. All right, Charlie. Thanks for joining me for Superman number four. Hello. So I got to say, I am loving Superman. It it made the cut, and I'm glad it did. It is a great little series. Um... See, we open up with uh, Superman and Batman fighting Doomsday, but it's actually Wonder Woman. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> That's an really? ad. Yeah, they got to stop that ad, man. That is just the worst ad. And you can listen to all my thoughts on that ad <laughs> as I mansplain feminism to all you all <laughs> on Super Connectivity last week. Well, well okay. at least it's one page now. Like a couple weeks ago, it was like a two, three page ad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> You know, it's not the it's not the fight scene that's the problem. It's the punchline. It's yeah. Anyway, yeah. okay. So we're opening up. Superman is fighting the Eradicator, who is the savior of Krypton. They don't have very logical names like Krypton anyway. Um, basically, Jonathan Kent, Superboy, realizes he has to save his dad. Lois gets knocked over, but of course she's no pro at this, so she's fine. He. Puts on his knockoff Superman, previous Superman's uh, jacket, uh, Flash Fries Crypto's cape, which is why they introduced Crypto, okay? So just so you understand, we introduced Crypto, not just so that Crypto could die, but to explain Jonathan Kent's cape. Because it would have just been too hard for the jacket that he bought to just already have a cape. <laughs> you know. There has to be a durable cape, Charlie. Uh, I guess so. I thought the whole point of the cape was that it gets... Oh, well, no, that was the John Byrne era. You know, the cape gets tattered because it's outside the aura of invincibility. Oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so he he 
even though like previously he had no control of his heat vision, he he, he perfectly spot welds the um the uh, cape to his jacket, and they both go and crack open the eradicator, which causes all the souls of all the Kryptonians to fly out. Which is some weird science magic, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like it's one thing to say, "Oh, we have the brain patterns of them," but this is like, no, these are their actual freaking souls. So the fighting would go, and we see Popeye, actually Bibbo. <laughs> But I believe that's supposed to be Popeye. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he was a big figure. I mean, do you, are you familiar with Bibbo at all? He was in the books, like, in the late 80s, most of the 90s. Yeah, but I do believe he's supposed to be a Popeye's pastiche. Um, <laughs> he owns a bar in Metropolis. Uh, he's arm wrestling this guy for this moon rock, which has just a hint of Krypton in it. And uh, Bib- and the guy insults Superman, and uh, Bibbo quickly dispatches him in the arm wrestling match because uh, <laughs> he has his trying to Superman, Superman's or yeah, Superman spelled with S O O, even though it would be pronounced exactly the same. You know? But so he's got to implies that he's got a weird pronunciation. So anyway. So um, basically, what happens when the uh, when the eradicator blows up? It somehow opens up a portal to his bar because because logically that's where the one piece of Krypton is. I guess there's no other Kryptonite on this planet. Was Kryptonite uh, not a thing prior to this moment? No, there was Krypt. Uh, I don't know, but it's like if it was Krypton, a pure Kryptonite, wouldn't it be glowing green? So I don't know. Because at the yes. end, he's, he flies up to the moon, so I don't know if it's like an yeah. actual moon rock infused with kryptonite. <laughs> yeah, well, because what was just saying, there must be some kryptonite in it. Uh-huh. That's why uh, Jonathan and Clark are knocked out. Anyway, the ghosts, all to, the ghosts of Krypton's past and, and affect the bar patrons, but uh, Lois and... Uh, Lois uh, and um, and uh, Papa uh, Bibbo um, uh, fight their way. Well, so they're fighting off the, the ghost possessed bar patrons. Uh, they throw the rock out of the out of the bar so that it doesn't hurt Clark and John. And Clark is like finds that he can communicate with the spirits of the Kryptonians because their souls were captured against their will. Basically, is the idea um, that they want to? They just want to rest. They're like, okay, Krypton, Krypton lives. It's fine. We don't need to be dealing with all this. Let us go. But of course, the eradicator is like, no, you must be imprisoned. We must make Krypton pure. Yada yada yada. How are they going to make Krypton pure with only one dude Kryptonian? Not quite sure, but we're going to walk with it. Okay, moving right along. Um, Fight, fight, fight. Um, Jonathan's using his heat vision, trying to protect them. The ghosts all say, you know, we're going to buy you some time. We're going to attack. Um, uh, Clark puts all of puts Lois and Jonathan into a submersible mm-hmm. to take them to the moon, where they'll battle the Eradicator there. Um, you know, uh, although all I can do when they're doing that is remembering the, the, the line from Futurama, when they go underwater with the spaceship and uh, they ask how many atmospheres of pressure can the ship with whole professor and says, are you kidding? This is a ship built to withstand the vacuum of space. So I would imagine you can ha- handle anything between zero and one. You know? Uh, so, and basically, you know, just an engineering thing. Maybe it'll, it all works out, but it does seem like, well, that's designed to not implode. The other one's designed not to explode. So, don't know if everyone's going to die at the end of this, but I'm going to imagine not. Um, big thumbs up for Superman. Uh, I do love Superman. As I said, this is this is um, this is a great book. It's a fun book. It was an action packed book, and uh, you know, for what it's worth, uh, like I say, it's 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 a Marvel book produced by DC, and they actually get it right. So. <laughs> Uh, 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 you're not letting you get away with that. This is world's finest. You have to give it a one through five with, or oh, I'm mean, sorry. With, do like half points or three quarters. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give it 
five uh, crypto capes out of five. It was a real good episode. I really liked it. Uh, five out of five? Yeah, I was actually, could this be a pick of the week? Um, I'm not going to say it's a pick of the week. Well, you know, let me see what well, else. It kind of is because it's your only DC book. Well, yeah, so it's my DC pick of the week, without a doubt. No, but this, and there's, it is an unregretted DC pick. It is a great book. Um, I highly recommend, if you're a Marvel fan looking to dip your toe into the DC universe, you can't go wrong with the Supermans. It's a Superman, it's a family book, so it's got that Fantastic Four vibe. It's got a lot of action. It's got a lot of drama. And it's even got a, a man out of time in the sense that this is a Superman not from this universe. So you got a little bit of Captain America in there. And, of course, it's Superman. So there's always a bit of Captain America. You know, just a great, great uh, book for the Marvelite among you. Uh, big fan of Superman, number four. Buy it today. It's only two ninety nine, folks. What, what do you got to lose? Mm. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Charlie. And th- thank you for being another voice this week since it was mostly me this week. <laughs> Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, no, hey, that's not your fault. Then hopefully the audience wasn't too bored with just me. But um, uh, if anyone wants to uh, talk to you about uh, Superman or uh, any of your uh, various Marvel interests, where can they get a hold of you? Well, you can always reach me at, because <laughs> I do like Superman, at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com where I get all of my emails, including emails from Hillary Clinton, who is, like, stalking me right now. I don't know what's up with that lady. It's like every day, another email from her. It's like, please, lady, come on. I like you. I'm going to vote for you, but, you know, you got a family. Yeah. Think about that. Um, and if you that, like to- <laughs> that Hillary Clinton, she's desperate. It's sad. It is sometimes. <laughs> hey, you know, she's an older lady. I'm a younger man. You know, what are you going to do? I can't, I can't, I can't control my own rabid sexuality. Um, <laughs> uh, just like Popeye <laughs> and moving right along and of course if you'd like to follow me on Twitter you can always do that at Charlie Esser because I am the first Charlie Esser to ever go on Twitter and that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E E-S-S-E-R look for the two E's in the middle for quality voice cracked on that first E there I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and well, for what into the show's uh, social media, so I guess I'll do that. If you want to talk to us about anything DC, like I even said before, send us your thoughts on Suicide Squad. We're doing a uh, special soon. Me, uh, Lilith, Charlie, Tyler might even join us. Uh, you can email us, World's Finest Pod at gmail.com. Uh, on Facebook, we're World's Finest Podcast. Twitter is at World's Finest Pod, and our shared Instagram is World's Finest Roundup. And remember to search for me, Phil Parrish, on uh, Pinterest. We have a board up there for uh, all the DC stuff and Marvel stuff. And if you want to talk to me personally, uh, you can always contact me, NightwingPDP at gmail.com. And on Twitter, I am at NightwingPDP. Uh, and you can see, you can hear me and Charlie Esser together in numerous other places, like we were saying, uh, All New Marvel Roundup, Super Connectivity. And even for the next couple weeks on uh, GammaCast on the 80s Reboot Overdrive. So check all that out because we are great yes we are all right that's it uh next week we'll once again we'll have another triumphant return of Lilith hellfire but until then kids remember eat your spinach because if you do maybe you can become superman's best pal number one (laughs) (laughs) good night good night